So it really is a great, miserable day today, but it is time to flight test the Hubsan H507A. Now I know that it's been a few weeks since part one, but parenthood has taken its toll on my review backlog. Anyway, in the first part we unboxed and inspected it, now it's finally time for the test flight, for which the ending might just make you chuckle. Links to the H507A are in the video description, and please hit that subscribe button now. The more subscriptions we get, the more reviews we'll be doing. Enjoy the review. So the weather's looking up already actually, <laughs> sun's come out. This could be a good flight test. Let's get this thing in the air. So as mentioned, it is now quite a glorious day just between getting out of the car and walking to the field. So I'm gonna put the battery into the H507 first. These batteries are very lightweight, they weigh nothing. And of course though, they're very small in capacity. So you're gonna need perhaps a few of them. Press and hold the power button until we see lights on the underside. There we go. It also emits quite a high-pitched weird whine sound, so you know when it's turned on. I'm going to leave it down there. We need to leave that for a little bit of time to acquire some satellites. And whilst it's doing that, I'm going to open up the X Hubsan app on my phone. Okay, accept the disclaimer and then select the H507A. You notice there's a H507E now there as well, which is listed. Press enter device and there we go. Right, press camera and you can see we've got our Google map. Now what I need to do is of course connect to Wi-Fi. So, okay, I've connected to it before during the setup. So my phone's actually automatically connected to it. Otherwise you'd have to manually search for networks and then uh, make sure you're connected to it. So if I go back to the app, there you go, we've got a live view. So first of all, it's asking us to do a calibration. So this is like the DJI Phantoms and all other drones, basically calibrating the compass rotating it on its horizontal axis initially and then it will tell us to rotate it on its vertical as well I expect there we go now we're going to do the vertical calibration and we just do this until it says stop now some people just rotate the drone I find it best to do as I have stand up rotate your whole body around otherwise it's very hard to keep the drone on its correct axis. Next we've got to bind it to the current mobile phone, this is so no one else can connect to it, so I'll click OK. You notice we've already acquired seven satellites which is great. Now wants to do a GPS accuracy test, so this is where it compares the GPS coordinates of the mobile phone to the GPS coordinates of the drone. The reason being it can then tell how accurate they both are. So you've got to keep the two devices within half a meter of each other. Press next, compares the two, and verifies that it's all good. So we've now got eight satellites, it's acquiring them pretty quickly now up to 11, that's really good. I'm gonna to switch to video mode. Quick reminder from video one, this top button on the left here selects the intelligent flight modes, and then we've got the controls on or off. And then below that, we've got the auto land and auto takeoff. So, without wasting any further time, I'm going to take off. I'm gonna just reposition the drone away from the sun over there and press auto takeoff. Here we go. <laughs> Bit of a long grass causing a few issues there. <laughs> okay, so we got props complaining, I think, that they can't spin freely. Okay, let's try that again. This is not ideal, but it will do. Okay, so auto takeoff. Second attempt, ah, that's much better. And up it goes. It certainly isn't in any rush to get up into the air. Very, very calm and relaxed. But look at that hover. That is really impressive, actually. Remember, this has no optical position hold. Only holds its position via GPS. So there is a slight breeze today. The wind's coming towards us now, so you can see it arching a little bit in direction. But I would say that's really impressive. Got 11 satellites now, got the onboard video recording straight to the SD card as well. Seems to be dropping in altitude a bit when the wind comes in, but overall it's not doing a bad job. So let's send it up a bit, have a bit of a fly around. It's 
very responsive. Remember, this is a Wi-Fi controlled drone. Uh, very, very responsive. I mean, as soon as I give a control input, it's going in that direction, which is really good. It's coping okay with this wind. It's not very gusty. And if you are flying a, white, a lightweight drone, stable wind is probably the best conditions under which to fly it. Just gonna get some more altitude now. Ascend up. Wow, it ascends quickly. <laughs> Looks lovely up there with those giant yellow props being spun by those brushed motors. So we're up quite high now. Let's rotate it around a bit, see if I can do a slow pan around. The controls are proportionate as well, so if you move your finger a little bit, it will rotate slowly. That's really good. So overall, I'd say the control methods and the app are really, really good. And that, that hover, it's just sitting there beautifully in that breeze. Got no electronic image stabilization, unfortunately, on the picture here, but Hubsan are updating this app all the time and we can only hope that they're gonna add that soon. So I'm going to now bring it down and it descends really quickly. No prop wash, which is surprising considering the size of those gigantic props. Going to point it towards me. There I am with my GoPro on my head looking stupid. And I'm just gonna try some follow me. This is one that everyone's interested in. So click following mode, press okay. So it's now in following mode. So in theory, let's go for a bit of a walk. I'm gonna walk backwards so you can see if it is actually following us. So I'm giving no control inputs and it is coming towards us. It's keeping its distance. Let's see if I can move it closer. Ah, okay, so as soon as you give any control inputs, it moves back into normal control mode. So let's move it a bit closer and start following me again with it being a bit closer to us. Okay, following mode. Okay, now in follow mode. So let's try that again. Yeah, it's following. I'm just going to turn the corner now. This is this is always a bit of a challenge for a GPS enabled drone to see if it can follow you as you change direction. Now, interestingly, the quadcopter is side sliding, but it's not rotating to see me. That's a real shame. So it is following me perfectly, but it's not rotating around. Let's see if I can yaw it. Okay, I can. So when you give it some input during your during following mode for your it doesn't change the mode but that's disappointing We've also got a battery alert that we're down to 37 percent overall i would say follow me not particularly great unfortunately okay i'm going to go out of follow mode i'm going to try orbit mode so let's see what happens click ok ah orbit mode doesn't work when the battery is less than 30 percent 35% sorry, that's frustrating because we're just at 35% now. What a shame. Waypoint mode, uh, okay, planning a mission. Let's give this a proper demo, although we've only got 28% battery, which isn't ideal. So, I have to pause it there and apologize for not reading the manual. If I had, I would have known that waypoint mode can only be set up when the drone isn't flying. Whoops. Okay, it looks like waypoint mode doesn't work either when you've got flat battery. Oh, this is a bit disastrous. Okay, let's try a quick test. What I'm gonna do now is fly it out of range and see what happens. So I'm gonna fly it over the playing courts over there. It's flying away, it's flying away. Currently 25 meters away, 30 meters, still got nice live feed, still looking good. 37 meters away. Still going. 36 meters away, 40 meters away. So it's got a good range on it, this. 50 meters away. I mean, we say most Wi-Fi controlled drones are between 50 and 100 meters. Very few of them actually are beyond 50. 
we're now at 56 and we've just had a warning that Wi-Fi signal is weak so uh, there we go we've lost it so let's see what it's gonna do okay I can see it flying oh it's coming back towards us <laughs> very efficiently flying towards us as well <laughs> I've got the Sun glaring unfortunately hopefully that's not blinding the camera too much so it's flying now directly above our takeoff point remember I took off from my backpack let's see how accurately it comes back to that location see the lights on the underside of it flashing okay so that's impressive when it flies out of range it comes back to its takeoff spot and then just hovers above it so um basically don't worry about losing wi-fi on this one it de deals with it very efficiently um okay so final test not been a great flight test for this one unfortunately okay so another test this will really challenge it now love doing this one i'm going to turn off Wi-Fi on my phone. Let's see what happens. So here we go. Turning off Wi-Fi now. Now that loses connection between the app and the drone. And the drone, it looks like it's realized it's now ascending very quickly. It's to turning around now to face us. God, this thing flies efficiently, probably helped by the size of those gigantic props. It's now coming back towards us. And it's just about hovering above the takeoff spot now. These props look lovely against the blue sky. And it's now coming down to land very, very smoothly as well. Oh. <laughs> okay, now I think I know why that happened. <laughs> the um, battery was quite low, and so it did its best efforts to fly back despite the fact that we'd lost Wi Fi. <laughs> Um, but I think just in the last few seconds there, the battery did drop completely and um, it dropped out of the sky. <laughs> but from a safety perspective, at least this thing does come back to you. And if you lose Wi-Fi or you fly out of range, you know that it's not just going to fly away, unlike most of these budget drones. So Hubsan have put lots of safety mechanisms into this. Clearly, they've put enough into it for it to be pretty safe to fly for most beginners, actually, I would say. So few budget drones I would recommend to the absolute drone beginner but this one is pretty impressive actually so this drone isn't unfortunately without any problems let's start with the negatives it's only capable of low quality 720p video it's not beautiful but this is not a drone for capturing high quality aerial footage if you forget to stop recording during flight and either pull the battery, crash or the battery dies, the video file may corrupt. It's a bit of a pain, but I have written a guide on how to fix your videos. You get just 10 minutes flight time and the battery seems to take quite some time to charge, over one and a half hours. The autonomous flight modes are not well implemented. Don't buy this drone for follow me especially. But let's not forget that this drone is cheap and so now onto the positives. It's lightweight and portable and fits easily into a backpack, so it can go with you almost anywhere. As a first GPS drone, it is really fun to fly. It's very responsive from the app controls and it's quite fast in the air as well. At under $99 or £80, it is seriously cheap for a GPS drone and putting the autonomous modes aside, it does fly really well. The hover especially is exceptional. Finally, the safety features such as return to home, battery warnings and the loss of Wi-Fi connection do work very nicely and that's important if you're new to drones. Overall, I'm not sure why, but I really like this drone. It's basic, but it's fun. I hope that this review is useful. Links to the products are in the video description and please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Of course, also hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. And of course, we'd love to hear from you. So whether positive or negative, please drop a comment below. Thanks very much for watching.